Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationblog.com and in this episode of The Automation Podcast, I sit down with Mark and Harry from Tatsoft to get an introduction to their software, Factory Studio, which you could consider their own successor to the popular Indusoft Web Studio. Hey, Harry and Mark, thank you so much for coming on the Automation Podcast today. I'm really looking forward to hearing all about your product. But uh, before we get started, could you guys kind of tell us what your roles are in the company? Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Sean. Um, so uh, I, this is Harry McCollum here, and I am the president of Tatsoft. And I'll let Mark just do a quick who he is, and then we'll kind of maybe follow with a little more background info. Yes, uh, he's Mark Tacolini. I'm Tatsoft CEO and founder, and very happy to be here, and we'll talk more in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe just hop right into uh, background. Um, I'll, I'll start with my kind of personal background, if that's okay. And, you know, so I uh, met Tatsoft about three years ago, more as a implementer. And we've been, I've been in this marketplace for 30 years. And when I say this marketplace, kind of HMI, SCADA, real-time application development. And we met uh, Tatsoft. We were looking kind of for a new, newer technology to um, provide to our customers. And we implemented a few systems in some major applications, rather large mission mission critical systems. And then Mark and I kind of got to talking about future and where Tatsoft's at, what they're doing, where they're going. Uh, I became greatly interested in that. And as of the first of the year, I've joined uh, with the Tatsoft team as the president and really you know, my role, you know, overall is to to move the company forward and to increase our market share and market presence, uh, not only in the U.S., but uh, throughout the gro- globe. And I'm excited to be be with the group and working with Mark on a on a day to day basis and the and the awesome team that we have at uh, Tatsoft. Well, Mark. Uh- on my side, I've been working in that area around three decades. In fact, my first project was with an Alan Bradley 220, <laughs> uh, three or four PLCs in uh, General Motors production line, uh, getting data from uh, HMI software um, running DOS. And at that time, it was so hard to do the applications with the software that I decide to start writing my own product. <laughs> so that's what I did. So uh, one company that I created and a product line I designed, and you may heard about uh, Indusofts. Uh, that's a company I created around 20 years ago, originally with the name Unisofts. Then it became Indusofts. Uh, that company was quite successful on the end of the day after a very hard <laughs> and complex negotiation issues, it ended being belonging to being sold. And now it's part of Aviva. And one thing, frankly, that I'm very proud of is this, that this product line designed around 15 years ago, 10 years ago, is it still mainstream in their product line? It means that architecture is still helping customers. Is pretty much the product they're using now is still the same architecture originally created by us. And the reason I decided to start that soft 10 years ago is I was feeling to the needing to go to a new, more modern architecture. So not only my previous company, but most of the products on the past, they were based in more or more monolithic architecture, accessing directly the operating systems and concepts like web, distributed applications, .NET framework. They are not really on the core of those products. 
And to be able to do that, you need five years or more because you need years to create the products, find your initial applications, deploy those applications and allow one or two years to be into credibility on the system. So it's a very long term process. So if I want to be where I'm now in 2020, I knew I had to start early, not looking for the short term results that were great, but really make the effort for the long run. And that's what I did, creating TouchSoft 10 years ago to create that new uh, generation. And meeting Harry, it was really great because the company reached last year uh, the mature on the product line to go mainstream. Uh, but I was in needing to find a person with enough market skills to do that. And Harry can talk a little bit more about his background, uh, but he did that already to other main products in the markets. So yeah. this year that when that soft and product line is mature enough to start to be mainstream. Uh, the timing to have Harris present, it was really great. Yeah, so, you know, uh, you know, to just kind of build a little bit on what Mark said is, you know, my background is, you know, I started actually way back in the day, but I won't go that far back, but there was uh, my affiliation with the Intolution company, which won a, you know, I, I, Steve Rubin was the founder of that company, and I met those guys uh, when they were fairly um, just getting started in the in the industry. And we built a basically a sales, marketing, support, and engineering services group around uh, the Innolution company. We were very successful in the market, and it got us a great amount of experience working with uh, major companies, major manufacturing companies, major industrial companies. So we've we've been there, um, supported, uh, provided, you know, product marketing information, all that kind of stuff uh, for years. And our experience or my personal experience comes from the customers, really the you know, major manufacturing companies and um, industrial companies and their real-time HMI, SCADA, MES kind of manufacturing intelligence applications. So um, quite a bit of uh, history and background and experience that I bring to the table as as well as obviously the, uh, the Mark and his group, so. I think, you know, we talked a little bit to the experience, you know, the technology mark, if you want to kind of just overview the the technology, we're going to get into a couple slides later on that that will kind of break down what's inside our frameworks platform. But Mark, yes. if you want to give a little bit of an overview. Yeah, and while we say fourth generation software, uh, the first product we create was under DOS. To do the proper migration to Windows, we had to really redo complete from scratch. That was the second generation. Then uh, new technologies like object orientation, C Sharp, the uh, Microsoft Foundation classes, they appear around 15 years ago. That was the generation number three. And my previous product line at Indusoft and many products, they are still what I call the third generation. The fourth generation is when you get rid of the path again and you create a new core, a new infrastructure, leveraging technology like .NET, uh, distributed applications, web technologies, not only on the user interface, but to the core. So let me explain what that means with one example. Uh, most people in our area are familiar with the concept of intrinsically safe instrumentation. And for the ones that are not, I will refresh the memory. Intrinsically safe instrumentation is a device that you can put in critical areas 
that it was designed so the curing the energy that flows on that device, even if you have a failure on that device, it will not harm your full installation. That's what I call intrinsically safe. It means, yes, it may fail, but the fail will be localized. Uh, and of course, the fail is quite unlikely by design as well, but more, most important is localized. When you recreate the platform 100% .NET as we did, you achieve what you call intrinsically safe software where the protections on cybersecurity, the protections if one piece of code fail, the system will keep running. You never, never, never you have things like blue screens. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, not because we are great programmers. Well, I think I like to think <laughs> that we are. <laughs> but beyond that, is because the technology you are using allows that isolation. So when you make the effort, and let's be clear, it's a huge effort. It's three or four years writing codes, more two or three years deploying the initial applications. It was an eight, 10 years effort to be able to be here now, mature if a mainstream product. But when you do that, using those right technologies, rewriting, not trying to reuse components from the past, you use those technologies that have that built-in security. So in our system, if a driver to the PLC or a user script it has some problem, all the application keep running and is able to recover. And that's because the careful selection and adoption of the technologies we have in the foundation of the products. That's it, Harry. Okay. And, you know, just, uh, I'm going to get into kind of our product family in a little bit, but we are basically the products that is out in the market um, is, we title it Frameworks. Frameworks is kind of the name of our entire platform. And then one of our products and the most popular one in the market today is our factory studio. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about industries. We, you know, Mark, Mark has been on a journey and just because a lot of people haven't heard of us right now, doesn't mean that we haven't been out there actively in the market very successfully putting in and um, working with partners to implement systems around the world in many, many different industries. So um, this is just a sampling of the industries that we're working with today. Uh, the product is really a you know platform for enabling real-time applications so it can be applied across many different, you know, kind of a horizontal um, approach. And we really rely on partners and specific customers to take us to vertical applications. So um, this is just a sampling of the industries. Uh, one of the key areas I think Mark alluded to in his introduction that we've been extremely successful with is OEMs. Uh, companies like instrumentation manufacturers, industrial computer manufacturers, even just very vertically oriented um, software suppliers have used our frameworks platform and uh, customized it to their specific vertical and markets. Uh, this is just a just an overview of some of the customers we're working with. There's we have many more customers at this point, um, but we really just wanted to kind of say, hey, we're out there and we are working with major companies in the uh, in a variety of industries. So speak to the the platform itself um, for a little bit here. And, you know, we it, we are truly an open and universal platform and you know what we provide is uh a, an environment and elements and functions um to do the major things kind of that the x represents there right that's for our frameworks 
um, technology and inherent in our platform is the um, ability to, to connect to real-time devices. And, and we actually include within the platform a bunch of different uh, protocols and connections to things like Rockwell, Siemens, OPC UA, and we'll, we'll kind of detail that out a little bit uh, more in the future here or in the a couple slides uh, from now. Um, and then we provide um, a platform for aggregating and transforming this information to your, you know, to provide your specific solution or application. We also have a rich set of graphical tools so that you can create um, visualizations, uh, makes it easy to create visualizations for uh, multi-platform for displaying uh, scoreboards, dashboards, real-time graphical user interfaces, uh, displaying your the results of your analytics. Uh, we also included in the platform is the uh, a rich set of tools to develop uh, custom analytics around using things like uh, C Sharp or Python. Uh, anything else you want to add there, Mark? No, uh, about kind of the starting overview. databases. Uh, yeah, just get like to that. yeah, we got more in detail on that, but just to say that we're very open on that to understand that different applications they need like different type of data storage. So we'll cover that in more detail in the future, but we don't have one single solution for that. We're able to have uh, different solutions across the project and combine different solutions as needed. And as an introduction of this slide, before I give it back to you, Harry, yeah. uh, one thing that we do very nice in our application uh, is not to have the data in the clouds or the data in the premises, but it's really to be able to allow the data, whatever is on the clouds or on the premises, be able to be used by the application, not having to migrate data from one site to another one. So a little parenthesis I'd like to do now. There are some applications that were great to run on premises, but they didn't have enough support for clouds. Then we have a, a, a wave where we have all those cloud products that were nice, but one little caveat. To fully leverage that platform, you need to give them all your data. You need to publish everything there. You need to move out all your data from the factory floor, from prem to the clouds. And that's not also the solution. There are some technical papers. If you want more information, you can write us on the blogs and we can give the referrals. That on industrial automation, 8%, 9% of the transactions and the data will still be on premises. So we design our infrastructure that doesn't matter if the data is on-prems, doesn't matter if the data is on the clouds, doesn't matter if using uh, the on-prems or cloud components of our product line. We allow you to create applications accessing both environments, not having to migrate and publish data here and there, and really focus on what we to deliver to the end users, what to deliver in analytics, not having to worry about, oh, how I can get to my data, how I can do this. No, no, uh, you have all the tools in our toolbox to manage those things in an easy way. So you can focus on the value, you can focus on the end user, you can focus on the information you want to present. That's for you now, Harry. Okay, yeah, and, and, and I think, you know, this, we really just wanted to talk here about just our open, open connectivity, right? I mean, a modern framework for industrial applications has to be open. And we provide all sorts of different uh, interfaces um, and APIs to be able to talk to and from our system. And this is really, you know, we've done a lot of work, as Mark alluded to, we've done a lot of work 
with um, integrators and large end users around uh, some of the major historian packages in the market where um, whatever, for whatever reason, the set of tools they have are not, not open enough or not powerful enough to provide them uh, their specific application. So um, we have some very robust interfaces to most of the historians, process historians in the market. And then from an enterprise system, Mark alluded to the cloud, but we also have done with our partners, through our partners, a lot of uh, applications where we've interfaced to and from their uh, business side systems like SAP and uh, like Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, hey, Harry, can I have you go back to the previous slide for a second? Certainly. So it, this is kind of an interesting place to be because I think, you know, the way I usually think, and I think the way most products are, is they're like, you have to give us control. So if you want reports on historical data, we have to collect the data. Or if you want, um, you know, if you want a dashboard, then we have to collect the data. Or, you know, it's, it, it seems like you're saying, if you have data in OSI, uh, Soft's historian or, Canary Labs, you're logging it with that, or if it's in a cloud somewhere, maybe AWS, you're, you're not so concerned of where where the data is or what PLC it's coming from. You're, it, this almost seems like you'll work with all these different connectors to do your thing, and you don't have to. You, it, it does seem like it would be easier to fit this into an existing system. Like you were saying, if I had 10 years worth of data in OSI Soft's historian, I could still plug your Am I understanding this right? I could still plug your yes. system in? Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the realities, right, of our market is people have been doing things like this for years. So what we did is designed a solution that can be, you know, it's open and layered. It can be really put where you need it, you know, and we're going to get into kind of the different product families that we have but it's really based on our core kind of framework platform. Um, and that's what we're saying is you don't, we don't have to be everything to everybody. We want to fit into your system and solve your specific problem, or we want to be a tool for the systems integrator to be able to say, you know what, my customer cannot do mobile, you know, or, he needs to get information from both Canary and the Rockwell historian, you know, and combine that information, do some uh, analytics on it. You know, we can be the platform for that. You know, we're kind of an open data hub, if you will, that can push, pull, transform. Um, it's really much more than you know, a traditional SCADA or HMI type system. It's really an application enablement environment. And not to give the full example now, because there is a video published, one of the Aussie soft users conference from two years ago, uh, a manager from Apache gave a presentation at the Aussie soft UA, talk about a project they want to show some information of data that was on Pi with geo information. And they were struggling for six months, one year to do that project. And they were able to do a very reasonable close to what they wanted application with us only within three weeks. Uh, and again, I'll make sure to share that on blog or someplace the link for that presentation at the Ozisoft Users Conference. Okay, so this is a little bit more, you know, a little bit more of a conceptual look of what is in, you know, what is in the box, what is included with our frameworks um, platform. And, you know, we kind of enable a whole set of applications, you know, and, and where these start and stop is is a little bit more vague today, but SCADA, HMI, MES, um, I, IIoT, Edge and Gateway, um, we're seeing applications in all of these areas. And, you know, we're, we're basically designed to answer 
um, the needs of those specific type of applications. Um, core functionalities, kind of core within the box functionalities, you know, built in are things like um, OPC UA. Um, see, you know, we even have a built in SQL database. Certainly we have connectivity, any SQL or no SQL database, but we also have a built in SQL database to get you going. You know, the minute you get going, you got a SQL database that you can interact with log data to or whatever you need to there. And um, Mark, if you want to kind of hit on oh, any yes. other specific uh, things. You read my mind. I was, yeah. to, I was <laughs> going to jump in exactly I know now. this is your more your favorite yeah. stuff here. <laughs> because one thing I'd like to emphasize the previous uh, we are showing that we are open to connect and work very well with whatever you have right now are willing to use. But we have one concept that's very important that we try to provide out of the box everything you need. Uh, so at the same time, we try to be open and work very well with any application to flow the data without having to migrate and consuming right away the data from other applications. At the same time, we have the concept to be uh, everything on the box. So we have the built-in SQL, we have the built-in tools for alarms. We don't have those optional things that need, oh, pick up this option, that option, that option, or pick up that third-part product. You are able to do integration with third-part products for a couple of reasons, but our platform, we really put lots of effort on those last 10 years to be complete with everything that you need for those type of applications described. So if you're doing SCADA, HMI, MES, IoT, Edge, Gateway, or things they call nowadays situation awareness, real-time operation centers, uh, decision support centers, uh, all that kind of applications, we do have in the box everything that you need without having to go after third part packages or going after optional is uh, everything on the framework. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, so this is um, just to kind of talk a little bit our, about our product family. Harry, so, could, yes. could I just ask you to back up a second? I'm so sorry. No problem. So guys, I'm seeing on this slide under operating systems, this is kind of catching my eye here. I'm seeing Windows. It seems like almost everybody does Windows and industrial automation, and that's it. But I'm also seeing Linux and iOS. Can you talk to me? I mean, does your platform run on Linux and iOS as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, what we did, uh, in, in, for many applications, we see really a very good value in deploying in Linux. And we do have lots of experience in embedded operating systems. Uh, one thing I'd like to share, uh, we were at my Unisoft company, the very first product in the market to bring a Windows CE HMI. Uh, that was many, many years ago. So we always had very good hands on, on embedded operating systems. So we, we can deploy it in Windows the many flavors of the Windows uh, supported by .NET, but we also deploy our applications in Linux. And almost all and any fl flavor of Linux, uh, from a Raspberry Pi to a high-end Linux server, yes, we can deploy our runtime. And about the iOS, uh, it's a simple explanation. You can run HTML5 in your iPhone. You can run a web page in your iPhone. But there is a reason. There are thousands and thousands of custom apps. Because if you create a custom app, not a web page, you can have enhanced security. You can have some more advanced tools on the user interface. So there are clear benefits on having a custom iOS app rather than a web page. Otherwise, will people not be creating apps right phone? They just will give the links for the pages. So we can run our mobile applications in HTML5 that runs in any device. But for iPhones and iPads, we also have 
the native capability to run iOS directly. Excellent. Okay. And so, one more yeah. parenthesis to close that, sorry, Harry. Yeah, People no could problem. not believe that you can write C sharp codes or VB.NET codes for your custom analytics and run that in an iPhone or an iPad. <laughs> Because allegedly the iPhone and iPad were not supposed to support those .NET technologies. But thanks to the way we did the design, yes, if you use our framework, not only you can display your user interfaces in native iOS apps, but even run uh, .NET codes to some more advanced programming on that application. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about our product family. Again, it's all based on the same core technology. There's, you don't get a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's just the way we kind of package it and um, size, if you will, the different uh, products. And so we, we start, you know, we go anywhere from edge. So we have anywhere from hundreds of kind of systems sized by IO points, hundreds of IO points to hundreds of thousands of IO points. And so you can take this framework and skinny it down, put it out at the edge, do some real-time communications to your PLC or any device and um, do some manipulation right there at the edge and either you know push that information or connect to other enterprise systems or cloud-based systems. So we start kind of low cost edge and we go up to what we call our frameworks unlimited, which is a way to buy our platform with, with no limits, no IO limits, no client, you know, unlimited clients, unlimited developers. So um, without going into a ton of detail on every little function within what's in the software that's kind of what did i i wanted to talk about our product family you know i want to just ask a question here i'm looking at and if anybody's listening where we got the uh, they have a, a an item here listed as edge hmi and that could, that i think that might answer my question from earlier when we were looking at all the different industries you're in you're involved in you had machine builders on there and i'm like machine builders machine builders that's typical all they have is a small hmi they don't typically have a PC, right? So it seems like Edge HMI, Factory Studio, and then Frameworks X. And it seems like the difference between Factory Studio and Frameworks X is that Framework X is is unlimited. It would, but but can yes. you tell? Can you talk to us, or maybe you have a slide coming up on this? Can you talk to us a little bit more about the Edge HMI and what that is? Because that's really in a machine builder's price range. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's really what it was designed to do is, you know, if, if you're at kind of the high end of our software, um, we we recognize that it probably has way more functionality and way more capability than is needed at the edge, but and at the edge HMI, you know, and it's really you could call this edge HMI or just HMI. It's really a um, skinny down version of the software mainly for price point and functionality of an OEM. So, and Mark, and Mark talked like about it. I'd like to put the skinny under coats because that gives a wrong idea because many HMIs out there, or you, I want to save data in SQL, all oh, you can't. I want to uh, do alarms, all oh, you can't. I want to do alarm notification, all oh, you can't. That's not the case with us. So uh, our Ed HMI applications, the main uh, factor is the application itself is small. Typically it's uh, hundreds or few thousand points of PLCs, it's not hundreds of thousands. But other, other than that, not going all the details now, the functionality of the Edge, Edge HMI, it's very, very complete and very, very powerful. And you can deploy those Edge HMI in, in Windows, any flavor of Linux, including the embedded versions, or you can deploy in Linux. And the pricing point, it's really, really very good uh, to be able to be added 
as a component of the device in the true OEM model. Yeah, good point. Good point, Mark. Yeah, so it is, you know, skinny down in the fact that it, you know, number of IO and its support of, you know, as a server to other clients, I think is is probably the proper yes. way to say it. But a lot of our yes. functionality and this diagram and and um, you can see this in in more detail kind of shows you what's the functionality that's included in there. And it is it is still a very powerful um, software yeah. development environment. So, And for the ones that don't have the visual, they are only with the audio for some specific examples. On the HMI, we do not support our uh, hot standby module mm. because the HMI was not supposed in the application to be that. But the MQTT, the SQL databases, the alarms, the alerts, the ranging, the archiving, all that's covered on the edge edge of mine for the ones that don't have right now the visual, only the audio. Yeah, and just for those same people, the price range you're looking between, I'm going to just ask to uh, round up $500 to $2,000 for a edge hmi that's the software license i imagine that's yes. in a machine builder's range i mean machine builders are typically putting in a thousand two thousand or three thousand dollar hmi so for the software part to be between 500 and 2000 that that is in a machine builder's range for the software portion of it yes and and it is one of our key markets and what we find is uh, a lot of these machine builders are you know they're kind of open sourcing their hardware and then they're using our software and uh that is a a good you know kind of price competitive and extremely functional system to move them kind of to the next generation This is the a an example of uh, the protocols that come kind of built into the system. I don't know if you want to speak to any of these directly, oh, Mark. Oh yeah. And, and then I, I think just my quick comment would. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah, my quick comment would be, um, this is we also have a toolkit that we can basically create any type of real time device driver, and then. Uh, the toolkit's also available for OEMs and software developers so they could create their own also. And this is pretty much, you know, a listing of the drivers that are included, but we also have some other drivers uh, that are available. Yeah, exactly. And just a um, side note on that, uh, my team, uh, when... Uh, I license the technology for my previous companies. Uh, one thing that was great, we, we license the technology, but the core group of developers, they are pretty much working together for, 20, for two decades now. So we do have an experience of having created more than 300 communication drivers wow. over those uh, uh, 20 years. Many of those drivers, they were created under DOS or a device that are not being used. So when we start to recreate the drivers, the .NET platform, because we could not use the previous one, we had to redo uh, to be compatible with the new technology. Uh, we found around 50 that are the ones more important. But we want to be very clear that we not only have the two kits to create new drivers, but we have a huge experience to add those drivers as needed, okay? We, right now, we support around 50 that we believe are really meaningful nowadays. And all those drives are built in at the platform with no additional costs. Uh, there is no fee uh, to use any of the communication interfaces. And specifically on the Rocco drivers, uh, for this new release upcoming, we put lots of effort, fine tuning, doing optimizations. So we can say that it's number one on the list because it's really a very, very good uh, uh, and high performance control logics driver that we have right now. 
Yeah, and I'll just add for anybody watch or listening, um, some of the, the drivers that would be of note for, for our viewers would be Rockwell. All the Rockwell ones are there. I see them, you know, all the serial uh, Ethernet, PLC5 Select Micro, but also uh, Siemens S7 devices. We got a lot of Modbus support here, Mitsubishi. So, um, you know, the Q and FX. So these are all products we've covered on the show. And there's a lot more than that on the list. But if you're listening, I didn't yeah. want to throw those out. And we support also some IT protocols like SNMP, uh, PING, uh, System Monitor, in addition to the PLC protocols. So, you know, kind of leads us to, to, you know, where that's a little bit of kind of what's in, in the platform and then um, kind of where we're going. So kind of major themes on where we're going for our software as it evolves and, um, you know, we, we get more and more applications out there, you know, connectivity, which we were just speaking to and, and talked to on several slides. Connectivity is key. You know, we're, we're constantly enhancing drivers like Mark mentioned on the uh, Rockwell driver. We're working a lot on Siemens and some of the Siemens native OPC uh, UA interfaces and things like that. Um, we're always looking at ease of use. You know, we are a development platform. Um, we come out of the development world and um, we are extremely powerful, but are always looking at how do we improve the tools for ease of use on the development side. And then um, mobile and HTML5 are, you know, major themes kind of moving forward and they they go hand in hand with us and um i'll let mark talk a little bit about some of the things in 9.1 but that's some of the things that are coming in our 9.1 release which is basically right around the corner for us it's coming out here between now and the end of the year so um mark if you want to hit on some yes of the major uh, things there are here. many interesting things like uh, html5 or .NET responsive dashboards uh visual builder for queries and if you have only audio try to get the image or go to our site later to see all the details but i will put highlighting three of them one of them is the built-in mqtt broker so like i explained we can run our software connection with any broker, but we also like the concept to be a one-stop solution. So when you deploy the software without any additional installation, not only you have the MTT client driver, but as well, you have a built-in MTT broker. So if you are exploring those IoT technologies, we can, with a simple one-shop installation, have everything everything you need to publish subscribe data between your HMI sensors PLCs and applications consuming that data like scale alarms stars and build, billing and that's also built in uh, in the products and another feature uh, that's quite interesting is the ability to uh, have that small smart flow connectors so if you're doing some process diagram with power or with data flow and you are monitoring the many connections of that we have the ability to connect those symbols so if you want symbol uh, you read the real-time data you lose that that device all the display will automatically update it we do the calculation to know which paths of the network is still have power or which paths of the network we still have data. So in addition to have all the next symbols to put the connectors, so graphically when you move an object, the connections they move around without you having to redraw, but it's not only the drawing, we have the built-in logic behind that drawing to update the status of the symbol, to update the status of the paths based on if there is energy, or gas, or water, or data flowing in that path. That's one of the features. And another one is about coding, Python and C Sharp. Yeah, let's go to that. Yeah. Uh, we do have the ability when you're creating our codes to select between uh, C Sharp, VB.NET, or Python. 
And because it's really an open architecture, you don't need to select, oh, but which version of Python? Any one <laughs> or the latest one. We don't have that limitations that's typical of the previous generation. Oh, which versions of Windows do you work and which versions of this you work? The answer in our case is yes and all, okay? But going back to that functionality, we understand different people are more familiar with different languages. So we support all of them at the same time, the projects, and in between C Sharp and VB.NET, we even have the ability to do the real-time translation of that code. So if you receive some code that someone wrote in C Sharp, but you are a VB guy, you just use our codes and you can see that code in VB right away. Uh, that's an that's example cool. of kind of support we have for the programming tools. I know a so lot of see, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I know a lot of us who've done a lot of SCADA. We've done a lot of VB, and C Sharp is also extremely popular. So that's that's actually really cool. Oh yes, and you can also make a play with your friends. Say you learn C Sharp in one day because you can write <laughs> your big application in VB, use the translation, and ship the application in C Sharp. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we have very strong support to customization because we understand that many projects, you don't want to do any coding. So we have lots of built-in templates. We have lots of built-in symbols. So you can drag and drop the base up application with no programming. I want to make that clear. We have those features, but very likely in a more advanced project, you need customization. Very likely a more complex solution, you need to have some coding. So that's why we don't need Visual Studio, we don't need a part, part two. All the functionality that you have, the .NET, VB, or C Sharp, we have the programming tools, the debugging tools, the translation tools, the step-by-step, everything built in in the platform. Okay. I some think screenshots. You... Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Well, that's it. Yeah, you take this, it. Yeah, no, this was just kind of a splash of, you know, you know, basically a bunch of the demo apps that we've done just to kind of show off, you know, some of the rich graphics and applications that we can create. And um, these, you know, kind of base applications, when you download our demo, you basically are going to get these base applications so you can kind of explore explore the software and and see some of the power of what you can produce with our software and uh to be uh, not too much on time i'll talk all about only one case study that's automation for let the utilities uh because a typical question we receive oh i i like all that how it's possible i never heard about you <laughs> And the reason is uh, the first uh, years of the company, we're not only making the product line become more mature before trying to go mainstream, but we're also mainly working through brand labels. <laughs> so we had many and many thousands of applications all over the world deployed through those brand label partners. And there is one brand label that three months ago, we got his authorization to make the partnership public because it was private uh, when we signed a few years back. That's a company called Spin. They have uh, more than 400 SCADA applications all over the world. Some of those applications are very, very large. Uh, one of the biggest uh, seats power management in Brazil is running uh, by our software through that partner. They have lots of applications in wind and power plants. Uh, using custom protocols like GNP and ESC. And that's just one example of a vertical uh, that our platform is enabling. Because as Harry pointed out, we are more a horizontal component product. But we do have those partners. So the only thing that's changing now, thanks with Harry step in as president, is we are going mainstream, but we have that huge basis uh, of experience. And you want to complete on that, Harry? I think, um, you know, I think that's mainly what we had to say about that application. And, you know, kind of this, 
would be kind of our wrap up here is just, you know, leave, leave everybody with kind of why, why frameworks, why tats off, you know, um, why are we different, you know, and, and a, a good, strong alternative in the market. And, you know, these are kind of our major themes is, you know, we're, we provide, you know, a complete, a complete platform, a complete framework for developing your industrial applications. We include a lot of functionality in the box. Um, we're scalable. You know, you can go from a small uh, edge or a small edge HMI to a unlimited system. So hundreds of IO to hundreds of thousands of IO. Um, one one standalone to many many clients you know so unlimited clients um obviously with restriction of your your hardware side um we're powerful you know built on .NET to the core powerful platform built you know on uh from scratch you know not um on more modern technology uh unlike some of the some of the legacy stuff out there we have you know very rich environment for graphics and for coding and connectivity everything is really there uh, we're flexible in that um, you can use our entire framework or you can use a subset of our framework and deploy it uh, in many different manners on many different platforms. And then security, you know, as Mark said, you know, they're kind of the intrinsically safe, you know, security again at the, at the root of the system and, you know, kind of designed, you know, designed easily to be fully redundant. Um, things like audit trails built in, you know, we've passed, and worked with um, pharmaceutical companies, uh, major major electrical distribution companies, um, and passed all sorts of security uh, specifications and um, different audits along the way. Uh, anything to add there, Mark, on close? Yes, just the four keywords for people that have only the audio. Uh, the four key words just wrap up as complete, powerful, flexible, and secure. You know, I'll throw in there too for anybody watching the uh, FERC and NERC, FERC and NERC. I don't know if you guys, do you guys do a lot with that? Because I know that becomes a big uh, concern with, um, well, I, I don't know if you guys have anything to say about those, but I've heard many oh, yeah. customers bring those up. I, I will give some comments and allow Harry to wrap up. But oil and gas was from the very beginning because our partnership with OSSOF is very important market for us. Uh, so we do have to go through all NERC requirements, network security, level 1, 3, 3.5, all things around with that. And that was happening five years ago, not now. <laughs> we were really starting to deploy our first applications. And the same free pharma, CR22. So I will allow Harry to wrap up that. Yeah, no, I, I'd just like to close with, you know, um, thanks, Sean, for giving us an opportunity to um, introduce Tats Off to your audience. And, you know, we're, you know, we're very gung ho on basically, you know, continuing our journey to kind of provide an alternate you know, powerful platform for um, industrial applications from edge to HMI, SCADA, and, you know, unlimited possibilities there, so. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on the show. It's very interesting because I, I do know, talking to some of the other manufacturers, that they're, they're in R&D now on their fourth generation. And so many of the products that are actually on the market right now are third generation. Um. I'll say SCADA HMI products, you know, and um, you can see that you can definitely see the, how the legacy, the legacy pieces of them are affecting us in 2020, you know, it's almost a, a burden in some ways 
you know. Um, so very interesting, you guys. It seems like, to, from my, you know, from my standpoint, from where I'm sitting, you guys may have a lead here on the fourth generation, where you're not burdened by all that legacy code, you know, because you're on. This is a brand new rewrite of a fourth generation package. So I find that very interesting, and um, I pr I probably should ask, and I uh, and if you guys um could humor me, uh, where did the TAT come from? What does TAT stand for? <laughs> Well, uh, some people say because my last name is Tacolini or tag assets and templates are also key to the product. Uh, okay. But the original, all that's true. But the, the first origin was really that. It's a word of Sanskrit, the ancient Indian language. Oh. And that in Sanskrit means the reality, the man manifested universe, the tangible part of the universe. So if you Google Sanskrit and that, you find the meaning of that word. It's a philosophical concept, very important in some ancient traditions. That's, uh, that was deeper than I thought. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys have anything else you want to go over? Or was no, that just it? On my side, really thank you very much for the opportunity to let people know that for the ones that never heard about us, you may have heard about us indirectly through my other business. And we work in that new generation very hard the last 10 years to make it to the point to start being more widely used. We're happy with the opportunity and excited for the future. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on the show and for Tolga for putting it together. And um, just really appreciate uh, the time. We are going to include in the description of the podcast, whether you're listening or you're watching, we're going to include some links so you can find out more about the product, maybe see some videos and whatnot. And I'll get those from, from the guys at Tat Software. We'll make sure all of those are included in the description. So you can just go down there and click on it to learn more. And again, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks again, Sean. Thank you. I want to thank Mark and Harry for coming on the show again and giving us that overview of Factory Studio. And if you enjoyed that show, please remember to give us a like and a sub. With that said, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.